Sports Central, we go over our next team projection of this offseason, and it's going to be the Florida State Seminoles, a team that went 3-6 and six overall in the 2020 season, which, considering Florida State is kind of in a rebuilding phase right now, it was not a terrible season for Florida State. How will this team be, though, in 2021 is what we're going over here today. We're going to go over a few players that Florida State will be losing, who will be returning, also getting their schedule for the first time this offseason, starting out with the previous six games for the Seminoles. Looking at this year, I mean, of course, they played Notre Dame, took a pretty terrible loss there, 26-42. to I mean, considering Notre Dame was in the college football playoff last season, I mean, that was not a terrible loss. But, um, of course, they beat North Carolina the next week, 31-28 uh, to was the final score there. That was a huge win uh, for Florida State beating the Tar Heels. I mean, North Carolina, that was a good team last season. And for Florida State to get the win there, uh, that was very impressive. However, the next week, uh, this team kind of fell off. They lost to Louisville, 16 to 48. Lost to Pittsburgh, 17 to 41. Uh, so two pretty terrible games there. Which I mean, you'd expect after a big win like that against the Tar Heels, this team would uh, improve off of that. But it did not go that way for Florida State. Uh, they also lost to NC State on the road, 22 to 38, and that was before beating Duke in their final game of the season, 56 to 35 was a score there. So, I mean, if you look at Florida State here, this team, I mean, they played most of the games of the season until uh, mid-November. This team did not play a game from November 14th to December 12th. They had like a four-week break in through um, November and December there. So, uh, but either way, they still got the win against Duke in the end. So that was a good way to finish out the season. First four games, this team was one and three. Last five games, they were two and three. Uh, so Florida State did slightly improve over the course of the season, even though it is, I mean, it was a pretty inconsistent season for this team. There's a lot to improve on uh, for sure going into 2021. As for your roster preview, of course, Mackenzie Milton, that is a huge storyline for Florida State. He is transferring in from UCF. And of course, you may remember his name. Uh, he was an outstanding UCF quarterback before he took a pretty terrible injury, which kept him out of uh, football for quite a long time, which I mean, his destination is now Florida State, so it's going to be very interesting to see how the Seminoles do uh, with Mackenzie Milton under center and whether or not Mackenzie Milton himself um, can come back stronger than ever, which, I mean, he took a pretty gruesome injury, so if you uh, if you ever watched that, I mean, it was, it was pretty crazy what happened to him, but just looking at his stats from his career with UCF, I mean, looking at his 2017 stats, that was when he had his, uh, his great season. Um, that was just before he had his injury in 2018. I uh, put up over 4,000 yards, 37 touchdowns, 9 interceptions, and a 67% completion rate. Those are some outstanding stats. Like, those are uh, stats you'd see out of a first-round draft pick type of quarterback. So, I mean, Mackenzie Milton was on the road to being a first-round draft pick. Um, but the thing is for him was he just had that terrible injury, which was very unfortunate for him. It's great to see him back, though, um, back with Florida State. So, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. I mean, if that's the case, he's going to be in college from 2016 to 2021, which, I mean, it's, I mean, you got to do what you got to do, but that's, that's pretty crazy for Mackenzie Milton. But once again, I mean, I hope all the best for him. I really hope he has a great season with Florida State, and I really do think there's a good chance of that. I mean, he's, um, he's been off for a couple of years. So you do have to keep that in mind here. He did not play in 2019, did not play in 2020 either. So uh, for Mackenzie Milton transferring in, I mean, that could be huge for Florida State. This team has had a few uncertainties at the quarterback position over the past few years, uh, which has kind of affected this team, or I'd say it really has affected this team. Uh, Jordan Travis was your top quarterback last season, put up just over 1,000 yards, uh, six touchdowns, six interceptions as well, and a 55% completion rate, which... Those stats are certainly not great. I mean, a 55% completion rate is pretty terrible. Usually, if you see a good completion rate, it'll be above uh, 60 to 65%. So, uh, Jordan Travis will likely be backing up Mackenzie Milton, I would assume, for the majority of next season. Um, if everything can stay healthy there. But Ja'Shawn Corbin, he's coming back. Uh, he was your top running back last season. Put up just over 500 yards, five touchdowns as well. That's going to be a big return. LaDamian Webb is transferring away. He was their second running back last season. Uh, he put up just over 400 yards and three touchdowns last year, uh, but he is not going to be with this team next season. So good thing is you do have Deshaun Corbin back, and, I mean, he's going to be taking a lot. Um, he's going to have a lot of action next season for sure. At the wide receiver position, of course, Ontario Wilson is coming back, your top right wide receiver there. Uh, that's going to be a big return. Uh, on this offensive side, just looking at him, he put up over 400 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, he had a big impact on this team last season. Uh, Tamorian Terry, he will not be back. He was your second wide receiver uh, last year. Uh, put up just right around 300 yards. Um, and I forgot to, yeah, your third running back is also coming back, uh, Lawrence Tafili. Uh, he's coming back as well, so you can't forget about him. But otherwise, uh, yeah, Cameron McDonald, your tight end, he's also coming back. 
Uh, he's going to get a lot of action next season, I'd assume, as well. Uh, so, yeah, this team is looking really good, I'd say, offensively. Uh, on the defense, though, you do lose five starters. You lose two defensive linemen, one linebacker, two in the secondary, which uh, five starters on the defensive side, losing all that is is pretty it's gonna be pretty tough i mean this defense will be a bit younger next season but the offensive side if, especially if mackenzie milton can play well this team should be very good offensively i'd say next season uh, but i will say about florida state this team i mean if mackenzie milton plays well for florida state this team is going to be outstanding next season i think if he can stay healthy and if he can put up some great stats and some great games this team is gonna be very good next season they've got a good chance for that this team has got a lot of potential it's just a matter of how good Mackenzie Milton is next year. Just of a bowl season in 2021, once again, heavily depend on the um, the way that Mackenzie Milton plays for this team. But looking at your schedule, uh, you do have a somewhat tough schedule next season. You've got Notre Dame, of course, to start off your season. I mean, that's a, that's a bang of a game to start off your season with against Notre Dame. Jacksonville State after that, that should be a win. Wake Forest, uh, Louisville, Syracuse, North Carolina, you got them on the road. You also got Clemson on the road, too. Uh, so you got to play Clemson, uh, North Carolina, and Notre Dame. And then, of course, you got Miami in the background there with Florida. So this is a tough schedule for Florida State. That's kind of what's kind of a roadblock here for Florida State is their schedule. I mean, you got to play uh, five teams with, uh, once again, Notre Dame, North Carolina, Clemson, uh, Miami, Florida, et cetera. I mean, all five of those teams were outstanding last season, like top 15 teams. And, I mean, Florida, they won the SEC East. You got uh, Clemson, who was in the college football playoff. Notre Dame was in the college football playoff. So it's going to be a tough schedule for this team. But looking at the first half here, I'd say Notre Dame, that's going to be a close one for now. I'm going to keep that as a close matchup. Uh, I'm definitely favoring the Irish right now in that matchup, but um, I'm going to keep it as a yellow game for now. Jacksonville State's going to be a win. Wake Forest, Louisville, both are going to be close ones there. Um, those are going to be some very important games for this team. If they can win both of those games, this team should be um, a pretty good team next season. Syracuse will be a win. North Carolina's going to be a close one. Uh, that's going to be a close, that's going to be a tough one on the road there um, against North Carolina. That team is looking very good next season. I really like Sam Howell, and that team in general looks really good. As for the second half of your season, of course, you get UMass, probably the worst team in the FBS. That'll be a win. Uh, Clemson on the road, that's going to be a tough one. I just don't see Florida State getting the win there. I mean, I consider making it a yellow game, but with it being on the road in Clemson, um, when Clemson plays their best football, I mean, this is, I mean, this Clemson team is hard to beat, and this is going to be a team that's going to continue, I think, to dominate the ACC over the next few seasons. So Clemson's going to win that matchup. NC State's going to be close. Miami's going to be close. And then Boston College, of course, will also be uh, somewhat close there. But Florida, as much as I want to say that Florida games can be close, I just feel like, I mean, for this for this Florida State team, your bye week is in between October 9th and October 23rd, which is kind of an unfortunate time. Like, if you could have had it, I'd say, like, in between, say, the NC State and Miami games, that could be a very a big help for this team because i mean you got five straight pretty tough games you got clemson which is going to be a brutal one nc state which will be a tough one miami is looking great next season with Derek king uh boston college is going to be tough with that being on the road and then you got florida right after that uh that's going to be a very tough stretch for this team and i just think i mean even if you can win two games out of those last five that would be a great um a great situation for this team but Ceiling is actually going to be 10 and 2. I'm going to move that up to 10 and 2 for Florida State. There is a wide range of possibilities which which can happen for Florida State. I mean, if Mackenzie Milton comes back and plays outstanding, like I don't know how great he's going to play just because of how severe of an injury he suffered back um, in 2018. But I mean, ceiling's going to be 10 and 2 for this team. I'm moving that up to 10 and 2 just because of I know the potential that Mackenzie Milton has. However, your projection will come down a bit to 7 and 5. I'm going to stay at 7 and 5 right now for Florida State, which some of you fans may say that's kind of conservative for this team. Uh, some of you fans may say, oh, eight to nine wins is great for this team. But once again, it's the schedule that is very tough for this team. I mean, you can't tell me that this is an easy schedule. You got Notre Dame, North Carolina, Clemson, Miami, Florida. All five of those teams are very difficult teams. So I'm going to put you at seven and five for the projection. I'd say that's a pretty good situation. If you can get up to seven wins next season, that would be huge. Uh, but the floor is going to be five and seven as well. So you do have that possibility that uh, this team suffers a lot of injuries. Five and seven will be the four in that situation. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below on Florida State. This will be a very interesting team next season. We're really looking forward to seeing how they do. I appreciate you guys all watching, though. Stay tuned for more from All Sports Central. I'll see you guys later.